those huge Triton events that you keep seeing happening in poker are also bringing huge cash games, side games to, the, to those areas. And we got big names playing in these cash games, man. What? What are you laughing at? No, those areas, absolutely. I don't really know exactly where they are all <laughs> the time. Those zones of place. They're in a, they're in a place over those there. They're, they're playing places. for a lot of money, including Aaron Zhang, who won the biggest buy-in ever in a Triton event. They're playing now a super high-stakes cash game. It's like a equivalent of a 2,500 5K game. So it's a very big game. We've got uh, Aaron Zhang, we've got Bobby Baldwin, who is a legend of Vegas. We've got, of course, Broke Live and JRB. It's just fun to have him around every once in a while. And uh, we have some very weird, interesting decisions from Aaron Zhang that we kind of got to take a closer look at. Now, just so you guys know, the, the money looks insane because everyone has like $100 million in front of them and things like that. But you just actually divide by 1,000? It's basically that, yeah. Yeah, so... Close enough. Yeah, yeah. So, like, whatever. 100,000 is 100 million, yeah, right? Yeah. So, now you know... So you can sort of follow along. And it's not perfect, but like Grant said, it's close enough. It's close enough. And of course, this hand was suggested by Lachlan Williams on Twitter. Of course of it was. Of course it was. If you have a suggestion for the breakdown, tweet at us, include a YouTube link and a timestamp. Also, make sure you check out Nitrogen Sports, many different things, including survivor pools. Right. Now, first of all, we always tweet about Nitrogen Sports and include a link. Use that link to get access to special Poker Guys stuff. Make sure you use that link. But yeah. once you're there, NFL survivor pools are happening right now, right before the season. It's going to be a lot of fun. Got to dive into those pools. Tell and them about swim it. Swim around, baby. Yeah, it's where <laughs> every week you pick one team from the NFL. They have to win that week. If they win their game that week, you advance. If they lose, you're out and you can only pick each team once for the whole season. At the end, there's always one person left standing and they get all the money. And the survivor pools are awesome in Nitrogen because they have a whole spectrum of buy-ins from free. The that's right. The cheapest one is free. free. And they still guarantee a fifth of a Bitcoin, which is, of course, thousands of dollars, all the way up to a, a Bitcoin buy-in, which it's means buy there's an insane amount of money in that one. And that's for the serious high rollers. I stay away from that stuff. Yeah, get in there, get into some survivor pools, but also get some poker. Hundred thousand US. Out the table is for that. Yeah. All right, I'll let you guys go. Later. Normally everyone's all nervous and scared. <laughs> How much? I pay twenty three to watch on. Let's get him. Come on, come on. He doesn't have anything. What do you got? The jacks. Cool. So two players of spades, two players of clubs. Cool. Oh, you call two. <laughs> I'm gonna bet like nine in the dark, I think. Oh, you're gonna be a big star here. So this is a three bet pot and he just leads. Let's get him. Top hair, top kicker. He says dark, but we don't actually know if he meant it. JRB's got top pair. Biggest part of the night. Yeah, probably. probably Seems like JRB probably I told me seven, I called and Aaron actions on Aaron. Seven. I bet nine called nine. Chief, you, you bet blind? I looked at only both cards. I got more money at home, so don't worry about it. It's not the first time I went broken on like with two fours. <laughs> two fours. <laughs> so it is a bet and call in front of him. He's got inside straight draw and position. So Aaron's not sure why he said, considering d betting blind and dark, he is going to make the call here. Definitely a couple things to talk about already here. By the way, for those of you who don't know, Aaron Zhang is the winner of the biggest buy-in in, in history. So he's got some money. He knows what he's doing, you would think, although we're not in love with his flop call here. First, let's talk about Bobby Baldwin's lead, which is kind of weird in a three-bet pot. Also, the whole little speech you gave before it, kind of weird, but we don't really believe means anything, right? I mean, it, I mean, he says, what, I'm going to bet blind, but then doesn't bet blind, right? He waits to see what the flop is, sees that he flops up top, and then bets almost pot. It feels like he's just a thing he's saying for no right. real reason, right? He's just, like, messing around, I would guess, because these guys are all observant enough to see that he's waiting, right? Right, and I'm curious to know with these stack depths if Bobby is choosing to bet fold or bet call, because this is a three-bet pot against an early position opener, so... 
Ace Queen is not necessarily going to be ahead here. What does he do if Aaron Zhang raises? I can't imagine Bobby Baldwin's going to fold, fold based on the stack to pot ratio and the fact that it's Aaron Zhang. Um, Aaron Zhang definitely is way out there, puts a lot of chips in the pot a lot of times, very aggressive. As we see, he's three betting with five, six suited here against what the under the gun open, right? Yeah, true. But I mean, like, Bobby's betting pot and yeah. then he's getting raised by a three better. That's pretty serious. It's a very dry board. That's I mean, true. So it's I, true. I mean, who knows what his plan is, but... I, it would, I think it's a mistake to decide to donk lead for pot with this stack to pot ratio and fold top top, though. That's probably true. And JRB, of course, is once again in a JRB type spot <laughs> where he just is forced to lose money because <laughs> that's his life. You Broke know? living, baby. Yeah, he's doing it again. Uh, so, you know, we don't really have to talk much about him. I mean, it's <laughs> a terrible spot. He, I think he absolutely has to call. Yeah, but it's on not the good because Baldwin doesn't have jacks here. He's not going to lead jacks. He's not an idiot. Right? I, don't know, I don't know what Baldwin's doing. It's weird that he's leading anything. Um, but if you're JRB, this flop is one of the better flops you could have hoped for. You just have to call and sort of hope it doesn't go like if Aaron Zhang shoves, you may have to fold. If, if they, you don't really know what you're doing later. You just hope it all works out. Like, can everyone just check? Can the rest of it just check through? Fold and just check, check, it's check, It's just check, not going to work out for JRB. That's never, the way never. life is. Sorry, you man. Know, I mean, he won a bracelet. Did he win Survivor? He won Survivor, right? No, he got right? eight. He got eight. That's basically like it's winning. A, for JRB, that's like winning. I mean, there were, there were 16 whole players, so he did a great job. Bye-bye. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the most interesting thing here is what Zhang does, which is decide to call. And yeah. On its surface, he has a gut shot, he has a backdoor flush draw that might make you want to call, but this is a pretty big bet here. If he's going to call here, he must believe that at some point in the future, he can maybe get his opponents to fold. But I don't know if that's necessarily true with this type of action on this drive aboard, especially when JRB is already in there having called, right? I mean, it's one thing if it's just Baldwin donking out. Like, you're saying he can't have jacks here. I don't know if that's true. Maybe he has some one pair of hands that don't know what to do and he doesn't I mean, want to check call. That sounds he's awful. old. He's old school. I don't know what the but hell he's doing. he's not an idiot. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. I don't know what he's doing. Okay. It's possible. But when, when JRB calls, JRB always has at least a queen, right? Yeah, like, always. So, like, now trying to decide, like, well, I'm going to try and bluff Jean Robert later doesn't seem like a good plan because the stack to pot is not going to work out very well. Jean Robert is going to have like just a little bit more than I think than a pot size bet left. Well, Jean Robert actually has him covered. Oh, Zhang is going to have more of a pot size bet left. Okay, fine, but but not a huge amount more, right? right. Like, it's like you can, like trying to get Robert off a good queen, which is what it looks like he has. Mostly ace queen or king queen suited, or sometimes a set. These are not good. This is not a good plan. So then we're calling for the value of our gut shot and backdoor flush draw. We it's can't. Not good, not There's good not enough. A, we're not deep enough. The, impl the implied odds just aren't we there. We have to be a lot deeper for that. This to work is a out. bad call, I think. It is. Check. Checks. Calm down. Don't, don't go crazy. Looks like he had the best hand, but he might not. Because he might have. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. Mr. Wu? Great name, Mr. Wu, as well. Yeah, he is. I'm all in. So Baldwin check raises all in. Let's get him. I think he's bluffing this one time. So just for TV, if you have the kings, they're good. <laughs> Frenchie, what are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> Can you be a straight? Sure, he's only have one whiskey though, that's why I'm dead. I'll show you this straight. You want me to show you this straight? You want me to show you this straight or not? Oh my god, show the bluff. Yeah. Straight! Oh, you get to see on the reruns. Hey, hey. You made a good fold. You had the tins, right? That didn't work out very well for Aaron Zhang. I mean, he was getting. A really good price there. It was 202 million to win 800 in you know these I mean, other types of or dollars. Or we can just pretend they're hundreds of thousands. Okay, right? 202k to win 800k basically it's is closer, what is what yeah. is happening here. That's a good price. It's not a good enough price with the hand that he has against against Baldwin's range here. Right. At this point, Baldwin is not going to do this when JRB has shown this strength with if he was playing tens or nines or jacks super weird on the flop. He's not going to do it like. With, with that hand. So he has to have a pretty reasonable hand here. It's still a little risky with ace queen when Zhang bets after calling on the flop, but he just decides the stack to pot is such and his hand is too good. Baldwin's decision is fine and good, I think, right? 
I think it's totally fine. Um, I, I mean, he checks in the dark. A dream, a dreamy sort of card comes off. There's that doesn't really hit anyone in any reasonable way. I mean, three five gets there, but that's pretty unlikely. Who has three five? I mean, Aaron Zeng does. I okay, guess. fine, yeah. but like you yeah. know, once in a while they get lucky and hit a gutter. Like, yeah. too bad we're going broke to three five. That's then. an open ender. Um, still, who cares? Yeah. Um, but the point is, like, yeah, Aaron Zeng can have kings. But that's kind of really it that we should be overly worried about. We block aces, we block pocket queens. The other sets are obviously possible, but I don't know if they're likely. Yeah. I don't know if he has all the combos of those things. It's Billy Baldwin. We're just we're just getting it in right now, and I think it's fine to do it. It's weird that he decides <laughs> to check in the dark, but I guess he's not sure what he's doing either. Um, when when he has two callers behind him, and he wants to sort of see, I think, what Robert's going to do mm -hmm. and, and what the next card actually is. And you can understand why he wouldn't know what to do if he's Billy Baldwin, the brother of Alec Baldwin, <laughs> as you referred to him. <laughs> he's not a professional poker player, so it's probably pretty tough for him to know what to do in a spot like this. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Baldwin, the owl, who um, wrote the Limit Hold'em chapter in the right. first Super System. Okay, so let's talk about Aaron Zhang's decisions here, because yeah. once again, they are the most interesting. Now, he got here, and I understand there was a plan involved if he didn't improve in a major way. He did improve in a minor way here, but yeah. clearly he's never good with a six against these ranges, right? So never. he decides he has to bluff, maybe get to the river cheaply is kind of what he's trying to do, but he's in position so he doesn't have to. But why is he betting 120 here instead of just moving in if he's going to bet? Um, okay, <laughs> because... He's trying to not. He's not trying to get to showdown cheaply. He wouldn't be trying to get to the river cheaply, right? Because, like you said, he can just check and get to the river for free. Yeah. But by betting 120 here, if if no one moves in on him, which of course he does not avoid, but if everyone just calls or folds, then he gets to check anytime he doesn't improve on the river and bet anytime he does. Does that really have value when you're no. never currently ahead? No. So no, no, there's no value there. And if we think about the opponent's ranges here, at least one of them has a queen. And probably, usually, one of them will have something even better in a spot like this. But for sure, at least one of them has a queen. And 120 is never getting a queen to fold. Even if, if Bobby Baldwin was losing his mind with Jax on the flop, John Robert has a queen and is not folding for 120. Not right? to Aaron Zhang. No, I mean, not to anybody. For 120? I mean, maybe to the tightest of the tight. Maybe, maybe Phil Locke will fold too once in a while. I, but yeah, it's Johnny just... Chan. I don't know. But not to Aaron Zhang, not here, not no way. So, so this, I agree. This yeah. bet has no merit and no value. It's just a very bad bet that's never going to work out. Now, Baldwin may not have decided to move in, but still he's going to at least call. And then maybe JRB calls too. Who knows? There's no way that Zhang wins this hand with this bet except if they just call and he improves, right? Yeah. Except the worst case scenario happened where Baldwin actually moved in and he doesn't even get to realize his equity yeah. because he's not quite getting the right price against Baldwin's range. Well. So instead, he gets absolutely nothing where even he had some equity against his hand, right? He could have just checked. Yeah, he sets $120,000 on fire for sure. Um, and when you say he's not getting quite the right price, I think it's worse than that because, yeah. like, he's not getting quite the right price. I think against Ace Queen, or it's almost exactly. It's, it's like it's super close. close. It's close on but Ace against, Queen. but against Baldwin's range, which is now check raising all in after the um, Robert call, even yeah. like that's strong. Yeah, and Ace sets. Queen, Ace Queen is probably the bottom of that range. King Queen is certainly the bottom of it. Probably it's Ace Queen though. So. Like, it's that and everything better. Like Grant's saying, it's sets and things like that. It's a disaster. At least if he shoved and got called, he would have the opportunity to win the hand. Yeah. This way, he just has a 0% chance to win the hand. It feels like, a, even though I understand where Aaron Zhang's coming from, and we talked about this on our podcast a lot, of um, when you call with this hand on the flop, in position, and then suddenly everyone checks you, it feels like you're almost obligated to take your bluff shot now, even though you improved to a pair. But, but... If they're never folding, you shouldn't be bluffing. And this is not a spot they're ever going to fold, certainly not for 120, but no. probably not even if we move in. I think it's really unlikely. I think you've got to just try and realize your equity as cheaply as possible, in this case for free, and not just set $120,000 on absolute frickin' fire. Absolute fire. Scarier than non-absolute fire. Yes. So we were not in love with Aaron Zhang's decisions post-flop in this hand. We didn't like his call on the flop. We didn't like his bet on the turn. We think you should be taking more passive actions and more folding type of actions yes. for sure. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think we're right about this? Do you think we're just stone wrong? Aaron Zhang does have a pretty impressive resume. Especially now. Yep, so we have to acknowledge that. Yeah. And uh, we want to know what you guys think. Let us know in the comments. Also, let us know what you think about the other players in this hand. Bobby Baldwin makes some interesting decisions, both to donk out near pot on the flop as well as to check blind and shove, and, and then shove on the turn. The shove probably yeah. makes the most is the most obvious play of all three, I would think. And then Robert's, of course, in this really tough spot. 
What do you think about these guys' decisions, period? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out all of our cash game hands that we've ever done. All of Watch them. Watch every single one by I clicking mean, right up there. That's a good idea. You, you should do that. It's you fun. Don't feel obligated to watch all of them. I mean, you should feel obligated to do that. You should also feel obligated to subscribe to our podcast. It's the Breakdown Poker Podcast with the Poker Guys. That's what it's called these I, days. I believe it is actually what it's called. Probably. It's, it's close enough. And it's a wonderful podcast. It's where we go super <laughs> in-depth. It's like 45 minutes to an hour instead of the shorter thing that we do here, where we talk about, like, if you want to know more about how we think about pre-flop, that's where you go. Yeah. If you want to know just more minute details about everything, if you want a little more humor, a little more good cheer, that's where you go. Enjoy. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and give this video a like.